Hello everybody, my name is Pierce. This is my channel Tales from the Road. Thanks for stopping by. I've been travel vlogging and food vlogging for just about six months now and it's been quite the adventure. But one question I continually get is what do I use to make my videos? What kind of tools do I use? What kind of camera and what kind of setup do I have? So today what I figured I would do is I would share the secrets of my super minimal, super compact travel and food video tools, utilities, whatever you want to call it. You can check it out here now. So before we get into today's video, I just wanted to remind you to hit the subscribe bell if you find the information interesting and make sure to hit that like button, smash the like button. And here we go. Now let's talk about the camera itself. So since I only have one camera, I'll tell you about it and I'm gonna cut to different shots where I'll show you the functionalities of it. But um, I use the Sony a6000 with a pretty standard um, lens, pretty much the one that you come, that, you, you, that comes out the box. Um, if you're doing like a typical vlog, you don't need anything crazy. Um, also the more compact lens that you have, the better. Because uh, especially with the, the crane that I just showed you, the, um, it, it, the balance will be will be thrown off if it's too much. Um, for example, I have this uh, secondary lens that I use here. Um, this is what we call a fisheye lens, uh, or you know, a super wide lens. So here it is. Um, this is a wide angle lens for DSLR cameras. This is a 4.5 millimeters by the company called Emolux. I picked this up in Singapore. I only use this when I am on the tripod because it uh, it's pretty heavy and it basically um, affects the way that my that my gimbal works. So um, it does work, but you got to be really sensitive. And if you get it in any weird angles, it doesn't work too well. So if you're going to use a secondary lens, or you're going to use like a tele uh, telescopic lens, or, or a lens that's bigger than just anything that's like the standard small camera lens, um, be aware that you're going to have to upgrade your gimbal because you need to worry about the weight um, definitely. So the Sony a6000 I've had since uh, maybe 2016. Um, I realize it's a little old for 2020, but it works really well. The, it's a mirrorless camera, so it's really compact. Um, the, actually, the video quality is astounding. It's really, really good quality. It shoots in 4K, it shoots in 1080. Um, and overall, the, the things that you get from it are, are, are really nice, and a lot of people find really high quality. Um, of course, they've upgraded. They have the Sony a6100 and own, uh, the Sony a6400. Um, those are going to be better. They have better stabilization. They have higher uh, image processing rates. And overall, they're just a better camera. But that being said, the Sony a6000 isn't a bad camera at all. It'll really get the job done. If you're a basic vlogger like me, you don't have a massive following. Um, you know, you don't need to worry about these things so much. Worry about your content, and then once your content is singing, or you've got some beautiful stuff, you've got some people into it, you know, then it's time to invest in something a little bit more, um, a little bit more professional. But, you know, for the basic person, the Sony a6000 is great. It also takes really fantastic pictures, um, and you can adjust a lot of the settings to, uh, you know, if you want to do something more cinematic. If you want to shoot in 30 frames per second versus 60, you can do that too. Um, you can put in a 128 gigabyte uh, SD card, really like it's anything you want to be. And it, the, the features that it has, the auto features, they work really well. So um, I'm a big fan of the Sony a6000. Uh, it's been a beautiful camera for me and I will continue using it until I decide to upgrade in some type of way. Secondarily, um, I use my iPhone 11. So I bought the iPhone 11 because it has a really, really, really good um, camera. Uh, uh, the, uh, iPhone 11 Max, I think it's called, or iPhone 11 Pro has a better camera, but this one, this one's a, this one's a good quality one. So, so what I'll say is that uh, being a travel vlogger is not the easiest uh, logistical profession or the easiest logistical setup for, you know, sometimes, for example, when I have to get my gimbal ready, I have to get my camera balanced, I have to make sure the camera's on, I have to make sure the camera's charged, I have to make sure the, the, the microphone is working correctly. Um, that takes time, and when you're when you're in a situation where you just need to kind of point and shoot, um, sometimes I, I use the phone. You can do a 0.5 times um, 
0.5 times focus so you can really get that wide angle shot much like a GoPro which is nice and the, the stabilization on the iPhone 11 is really phenomenal. So um, I, I like to mix and match. Sometimes the quality is a bit different so I don't want to mix up the quality too much. Sometimes it can be kind of um, you know, disorient disorientating for the viewer, you know, to see one quality and a different quality. They're both good, but they're just different. So if you want that standard look throughout your video, I would definitely shoot with one. But um, yeah, this is a really good on the go thing. And when you put it um, side by side with the thing I use for my crane, um, you can really get some nice shots because you don't have to worry about the stabilization so much. So many people wonder how you get those really smooth, crisp shots, especially when you're walking. Um, many people assume uh, I'm using a GoPro or I'm using a, a, something with a really high auto stabilizer within the, within the device itself. The Sony a6000 that I use is not an amazing you know, camera for stabilization. I think it was uh, maybe one or two years before Sony really invested into stabilization. So um, to, you know, you can always do the, the handheld thing, but it's not, if you want it to look professional or you want it to look actually reasonable, you, you need to get yourself a gimbal. So. Um, when I was in Vietnam, I picked up, I did a lot of scouring for uh, different kinds of, different kinds of things you can use. So I found this one. So this is the uh, Zhi Yun Crane M2. It's a really cool little gimbal. Sometimes you can find, uh, you know, the bigger ones, more heavy duty ones. My camera's not that heavy, it's pretty compact. I have a mirrorless, so it, it doesn't weigh a lot. And so th this can, this can, this can do the job. If you have anything more heavy, um, maybe than like, I don't know, let's say like a pound. Uh, this is not gonna this is not gonna work for you. You need something bigger. Um, sometimes the company called Ronin makes really nice gimbals or they they do different things. But um, I find that this works for me pretty well. It's a little bit janky at times. Sometimes it's hard to get the uh, to get the weight right, but it, it does work quite well. So the way that this works is you have essentially like two um, two counterbalances here. You have one for the camera, so the camera sits here and then you have one that supports the back. So when you turn it on, there's a function where you can unhinge it, and then you use this as like a, you know, kind of like a grip, and then from here you can move the camera in various ways. Um, I find that this is really good for walking, this is really good for shots where you pan up, pan to the side, you pan down, and the really cool part about this is that they have different modes that you can use. So this has a pan follow mode, which keeps the camera in one place and allows you to rotate the uh, the gimbal. So it really gives you that nice, smooth look. It has a fixed position one where it locks the camera in place no matter how you move the gimbal, the camera is gonna stay in one place, which is uh, which is really nice if you're really focusing on a subject for a longer period of time and you're not, you don't wanna worry about your, your hand, you know, like messing up the shot. And then lastly, they have a POV function here so it allows you the camera to move, you know, like um, organically as you move your wrist. Um, this thing's really easy to use. Uh, it charges really well, uh, which is what I really enjoy about it. And um, the functionality is, is really easy to use. Um, you can actually use the Bluetooth and, and, and uh, control your camera directly from the thing. There's actually a recording button. You can go uh, wide and you can go zoom in. Um, I don't use that function. It, it drains my battery a little bit and I don't find it super annoying to just press the record button on the camera as it is. Um, this was about $189 in Vietnam. I'm sure you could get it cheaper in other places. And uh, on the eye test, it, 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 it works really well. It's just, um, it's a little janky sometimes. So uh, be aware that, you know, if you're only spending $189 on something to really boost your, uh, you know, to boost the quality of your production, um, you're gonna kind of get what you pay for. If you pay like three or $400, you might get a really good one. But um, for my needs, I, I enjoy my Zhi Yun M2 um, crane. I do think I'm probably gonna upgrade at some point, maybe in the next year. I kind of, the wear and tear that I put on this is a lot as, uh, you know, I, it's a lot to set up, you know, put back in your, in your backpack, take it back out, put it back in. Um, some people have this really nice setup, but I don't know if they're, how much they're on the go. When I shoot, I have like, two or three hours where I'm really out, I'm really doing a lot of shots, I'm really walking around with this, and I'm putting it in my backpack and taking it back out, um, which is, you know, it's, it's just what you do. The nice thing about this is there's an attachment on the bottom, you guys can see there, where you can screw on a uh, tripod. Uh, they have a mini tripod that comes with it, and then you can stand. So it's really good for shots where you need to sit down, maybe talk about some food, maybe do some other things. Um, 
yeah, overall, this is really, this is a really good thing. Big fan of this one. They also have an attachment for your phone. Um, same way that the camera screws on to, to this guy, you can screw on a phone. You just put it in there and then you can use it as your main camera. A lot of people use phones for vlogging and uh, sometimes I'll use my phone because I have the iPhone 11, it's a really high quality. Um, and uh, yeah, and sometimes it's just easier than, than setting up the whole camera. It really depends on you. Now let's talk audio quality. So for my Sony a6000, um, the camera itself the audio quality is okay, it's a little bit tinny, it's not anything that, um, it's not very special. So what I would recommend is you go and you buy a shotgun microphone. One of the issues with uh, the Sony a6000 is that uh, they don't actually have a microphone jack. So you won't be able to buy the standard shotgun microphones that you buy, um, you know, that you can buy for other cameras. So uh, this is gonna require you to go to Sony. They have a, they have a, a jack, which I'm showing you now. Uh, to put in the shotgun microphone, and I find the sound quality is a million times better. Um, it's If you're talking from the back, it's still not amazing, but if you're in front of it, it really focuses the sound. You don't have to worry so much about the noise around you, and it's really the way to go. If you use the, um, the iPhone, uh, the speakers in your headphones sometimes work quite well um, in a pinch. Uh, the speakers on the iPhone itself isn't so bad. Um, in, it, even if it gets a little twinge of wind, you're gonna hear it, but um, other than that, the microphone itself isn't uh, isn't too bad. So, uh, you know, if you're trying to be super minimal and you're just starting out, these are both really easy ways that you can you can go about it. The shotgun microphone, I believe I paid $129 for it um, to be an attachment to the camera that I already had. Four years ago for the Sony a6000, I think I paid somewhere around $550 for the camera and the lens. The cool part about the Sony a6000 is you can get a really, really good quality camera um, without breaking the bank, and it's really compact, so it's like uh, you don't have to worry about lugging around a huge DSLR, which is um, something I find quite nice. Let's talk data storage. Um, bloggers, as we know, we, uh, we take up a lot of space, so what I would recommend you do is go for an SSD hard drive. Um, SSD essentially is just a faster data storage option. Um, the other option, you can store a similar amount of data, but the upload speed is quite slow. So if you're dealing with lots of megabytes, especially lots of gigabytes, as video, especially like AVC, MP4, um, and the other types of kind of like what you can shoot in 4K sometimes can get quite, uh, quite dense. So uh, this is a terabyte hard drive. I'll probably end up buying another one of these. This is from a company called Lacey or Lossy. I'm not exactly sure where the company comes from, but uh, it uploads really fast. It's really durable. You can keep it forever. Um, it says product of Taiwan on it. And uh, if you are into blogging, just really uh, remember that you're gonna need some serious data storage. So here we go, the La C. It's a little beat up, but you know, I just throw this in my backpack when I can. Um, and it's, uh, it's a good one, it'll last you a long time. And the bigger the, data that you get, let's say a terabyte, maybe two, five terabytes, uh, that's really gonna save you a lot of frustration in the future because you are gonna rip up your SD cards and you are definitely going to need data storage. Portable charging. Uh, portable charging is a really important part of uh, being a vlogger. You've gotta be ready to go. Um, a really important piece is just having a simple, a simple charger. This is just your typical like pocket portable charger. Use it in a, you know, you use it in quick jams. Let's say you need to recharge your battery real quick, or especially when I use my phone to vlog. Um, let's say your phone needs a little juice while you're uh, on to your next one. Um, just make sure you have one of these. The smaller, the better. Um, I can get four battery charges on this, so um, I would recommend it. I have no idea what brand this is. I wouldn't recommend that you get this brand. You can get anything. Just make sure that you have one of these in your pack at all times. For my Sony a6000 camera, I have uh, two backup batteries. Uh, these charge on a charging port. Uh, I found this cheap one online called RAV Power. Uh, you just need this type of battery. If you're interested in the a6000 batteries, I will set, put a link below. Um, you can buy these. This whole thing cost me maybe like 20 bucks. Um, these don't have the best battery life. If you really want a good battery life, I would recommend you get the batteries directly from Sony. But um, when you're in a pinch and you need, you know, like a, an extra, let's say 30 or 40% that your first battery uh, didn't have, these things are good. They're not that heavy, they're small, they're compact, and you can take it anywhere. Um, I don't normally take the charging cable with me. I normally just grab one or two to go. Um, and again, if you, uh, if you have your backup power charger and you have this, 
um, you know, you can just charge it on the fly if you happen to forget to charge it. So, um, you know, all of these, I mean, pretty small, pretty small. And this is all your charging needs that you would need in general. The last thing I want to talk about, um, what any vlogger needs to know, is that uh, you need to edit your videos. Unless you have money to pay someone else to edit your videos and you want it to look nice and look cool, you got to edit it. So um, I was using this interesting program called Wondershare Filmora 9. Um, it's just like an upgraded version of iMovie that you can download online. I bought the lifetime package for something like $69.99. Uh, pretty good deal. You get a lot of functionality. You get um, you know, you don't get the so much technical stuff that you find in better in better editing suites, but overall for a beginner, it's a really nice. So recently I just upgraded to Final Cut Pro 10. Um, you can do pretty much anything in there. If you're interested in Final Cut Pro 10, I'll, I might link some, some videos for you guys that I found helpful for getting started on Final Cut Pro 10. Um, you can really change the, it, it's really like a step up from what you can do in a, in a more basic editing suite. And it's something that I'm really excited to use more in my videos to make them more delightful. One last thing I want to talk about is the bag in which I carry my stuff in. So I've seen lots of vloggers and you know, they spend hundreds of dollars on these swanky camera bags. I'm a minimal guy. I keep it really simple. So I found this really nice bag in Vietnam. It was $10. It's an Adidas bag. And the coolest part is that you can transform it into a really small bag. So I will show you guys how that works right now. You give it a little zip and there you go. It's a sturdy backpack. It was only $10. So I assume it's more in the United States because this is probably a fake one. You can take it to go. Really easy to put in your, uh, to put in your carry on luggage and, uh, you know, it's a really good addition to any uh, minimal vlogger setup. So lastly, what I will say, vlogging is not easy. Um, it takes a lot of time. The time that you take to edit takes a long time and the equipment, finding the right equipment, you just gotta find what works for you. There's no 100% success rate with anything. The, fa the fact of the matter is, uh, sometimes it doesn't matter how good your vlogging equipment is. It just matters what you're shooting with that equipment and how your storytelling is and how you're creating uh, your content. So um, I found that my most important videos, uh, you know, if it's a little shaky, no one really cares. If it's a, if the sound is a little up and down, uh, you know, it's not as professional as maybe some other vloggers, but you know, like I'm not a team of four people with lights and cameras and and producers. I'm just one guy with a with a crane, you know. Um, and so you know. Be yourself, try to create something unique and interesting and uh, start basic and work your way up. Um, I'm thinking about adding a GoPro Hero 8 to my repertoire because sometimes I find the camera a little bit cumbersome to lug around. But uh, for now, we have what we have and uh, without breaking the bank, we were able to accumulate all of this for a little bit less than $1,000, um, which for any vlogger is a really good setup, a really good starting point and uh, I think that should get you going. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the video, make sure to of course like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. We have amazing food and travel videos coming to you from all around the world and soon more technical vlogging videos where I explain a little bit about backpacking, where I explain more about the equipment, where I explain more about how I make it happen. So all of that coming soon. I hope you guys have a great day and cheers. Keep on traveling.